What's your stance on sunscreen? Okay, so... Let's get into it. Yeah, well, I mean, it, it, it's a big question to unpack. Uh, sunscreen and humans have only been around together for less than 100 years. Mm. Uh, what What's really changed, and you could make the argument the sunscreen is the, is the main culprit here, what's really changed is our relationship with the sun. You know, again, rewind the clock 100 years. I'm not saying you don't have to be outside at high noon, but if you were outside at high noon, you were covered. Uh, you were clothed. Um, it's only in, you know, really the, I would say the last 60 to 80 years that <laughs> you have... You, you see anybody half naked at noon uh, near water, you know, we all go to the beach, but you know, the false sense of security that we have been handed by this idea of super SPF. I can, I can close my eyes right now and I can smell the Panama Jack tanny oil that my dad would just lather me with. You know, when I was a kid, we'd go down to Mobile and go fishing and all these things, and it, you had number six, number eight, number ten, and number twelve. So the SPF value of this oil—it was not a cream. It was a when, when you finished putting it on, it was you, you were glistening, mm. and you were glistening an hour later, like it just—it was there. But I think the biggest SPF value you could get in 1985, 86 was probably ten or twelve, maybe mm. fifteen. And so you look at these lines, you know. Sunscreen use has gone up. It's almost a hockey stick straight up. SPF value. Now you can get 150 SPF value cream. So that's gone up. So has the incidence of cancer. And so I think, you know, vitamin D metabolization is critical. Mm. Uh, it's, it's not even a vitamin. It's a hormone. And so we've, we go out in the sun and then we block our ability to absorb that, that sun. And we've lost this respect for I mean, when I've got my kids, we go to the beach, get up in the morning, we go to the beach, lather them up, and uh, when it gets to be about 10, 30, 11 o'clock, if they want to stay out, then we're going to put a hat on them, we're going to put a shirt on, you know, we're going we're gonna to cover up, or let's go inside, let's have a lunch, let's work on a puzzle, and, you know, roll around about 3.30, still plenty of sunshine out, mm. it's back to the beach for some more play, and so our respect for the sun has been misguided by the idea that this, you know, junky cream with an SPF value is somehow protecting us when when in reality it's 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 not protecting us from the real relationship we should have with the sun, which is it's really hot. Let me get my ten or twenty minutes of good solid high noon exposure and then it's time to cover back up. And so I think that's done us a real disservice. Is there any kind of natural SPF you'd like to use if you wanted some extra protection? Yeah, we're developing one right now, and you'll see oh, some of nice. these. some tallow creams. Um, um, oh, gosh. I used uh, this brand called Tallow Twins on Memorial yep. Day. That was pretty good. Oh, Lord. What's that? I, I poor sleep for two nights in a row. What's the... Um, Baseball? No, I'm trying to think of the active ingredient. Zinc? Uh, zinc oxide. Thank you. Good Lord. Thank you for, for telling me my, hey. my business. So, so zinc oxide, uh, raspberry uh, seed oil, carrot seed oil. There's a couple of seed oils, but again, I, uh, I, I would say the best solution is just awareness. You know, we got all this amazing tactical gear these days, lightweight, dries out quick, you know, big hats. Um, I'll tell you the best thing you can do for vitamin D in your son is, is avoid UV sunglasses during mm -hmm. the day hmm. you know we absorb a ton of vitamin d through our eyes and of course everybody puts their it's like everything else right coming off coffee for a couple days well coming off your glasses for a couple days is gonna it's gonna set you back it, it's not gonna feel good but man you acclimate it's great for your eyes uh, as well but yeah um zinc oxide's the number one we'll, we'll, we'll get a product one day i don't know if we're gonna put an spf on it if you if you're in the skincare industry and and publish an SPF on your product, then it's FDA tested. And I'm not I'm not against going through that process, but it's expensive and takes six to eight months. And you know, what do you do if they say no? I don't know. There's some products out there that are sun creams that don't mm. have an SPF on them, 
We'll have one someday. You think that. you think you can get the consistency of lard to be able to be dis, uh, dispensed out of a spray bottle? Um, I think a squirt bottle. Yeah. Yeah. Lard for sure. Leaf lard and tallow might be a little tough, but I'm I'm all for a, a lard heavy, lard only product. Like an yeah. aerosol can. Yeah. Oh, you're thinking aerosol. I didn't know that if it was possible, legit. but uh, it's definitely possible with a pump. I mean, and if you're at the beach, it's liquid anyway. Get that pump. Yeah, you got to get the pump. Yeah. Pig uh, pump. The lard wants you to pump. <laughs> Fat pump. 